We're going to hear from Jeeves as well now, who's going to explain a little bit more about what we've been listening to and uh, singing about. So could you, why don't you come to the front uh, without knocking over the camera. Uh, come and sit and you can listen to Jeeves. He's not that scary close up, so you'll be all right. Come, come, come and sit. Well done, Eden. Well done, Lexi. That's it. Spread yourselves out. You can sit around. Mind the camera. Excellent. Well done. Right. Let's, let's uh, welcome Jeeves as he comes up and uh, shares a bit more about what we're listening about this morning. Okay, right kids as well, we've got a massive tub of celebration. So if you are wonderfully behaved, um, as much as my level is, which is all right, um, you can have some chocolate at the end. Yes, happy, happy? Good, okay. Great, so I don't know about you, but this year in particular, when I've been preparing myself for Christmas, because there's always a little bit of sense of hesitation and, and kind of this aspect of what's going to happen, not going to, not going to know, what's going to occur. My Christmas has ended up being a little bit rushed already. Kind of like the first game that we've been playing. Everything's just been kind of rushing around and a little bit chaotic. Do I get presents? Do I not? Do I send them? Do I not? Do I gather food? Do I not? And all the kind of preparations can often feel like that at Christmas. Exactly like that first game of just trying to rush around and figure out what on earth is actually going to happen. I think it's really easy for us, especially those who might go to church on a regular basis, or even regularly at Christmas, to just kind of hear and know the Christmas story for what it is, rather than look at the depth of the detail behind it and kind of go, why do Christians actually celebrate this? Why is this that important? Why, why is this so special? Why is this so different? And I think, I suppose, what I just wanted to do in this little bit of time I had, let us take a breath and to just look a little deeper at the Christmas story, just a little bit, to hopefully allow us to unpack it and allow us to just celebrate it. You right, boys? Yeah? Good, we're doing well. So, I don't know about you, but this whole idea of the birth of Jesus, when we talk about it in the Christmas celebrate, a birth of a baby, it's an amazing thing. It's a very interesting thing, though, as well. But if we look at the whole Christian story, if we look at the whole story of the Bible, in the Old Testament, we have basically a whole bunch of prophecies or promises that are talking about this, this Messiah that's going to come. And really, the whole of the Old Testament is pointing to this moment about this Messiah that's going to come. If you remember Elijah's reading, it says, talks about that as well talks about certain things that this Messiah had to be to be able to come. Messiah basically means liberator, saviour, freedom maker. So for a long time, you had these promises about this, but it had to meet a whole bunch of conditions. Now, if you've ever been given a whole bunch of rules and you have to meet every single one of them, it's sometimes a little bit difficult. Let me explain with a little game. Now, Megan, you've been amazing at doing leading the games, haven't you? Let's pick up Megan. You've done amazing in the game. I know you so well that you're a competitive person yourself. So I need you to help me in a game. And just because he's here, JC, can you also be the other person? Thank you very much. I love people on JC, he's a good boy. Okay, so what I'm going to show you um, is I'm going to show you a list of six rules and conditions that you've got to play to basically win points for this little game. You've got 30 seconds to be able to do it, okay? If you complete all of them, Every single sweet that I've got here, you can have. Okay? So if you meet every single rule here, you can have all the sweets that I've got in the bag. Happy? Good. Right, you've got 30 seconds. Ready? Go. One. I'm telling you now, I'm looking forward to Steve telling me the right answer for the third, uh, the third question. <laughs> it's been 20 seconds. Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, let's go for the rules, shall we? Uh, did you stand on the leg for eight seconds total? Yeah, I think you did. Did you wear a red hat for five seconds and a blue hat for the next? 
That's a must. No. Um, can you tell me the, the um, math, mathematical equation? Six thousand. Six? Eight thousand. <laughs> I, I love you so much. Wow, wow. Uh, did you uh, did you sell uh, bakers for twenty one point five seconds? Uh, yeah, just about. Uh, did you hop 34 hours high and start jump three times away 14 times? No. Nope. Did you eat pineapple for breakfast? Last night. That's the count. Did you actually last night? Yeah. That would be so close. Oh. <laughs> I was betting with no one did that one. Did you? Uh, no. Sorry, you can't have any more food. Sorry, you can sit down. Well done, guys. Okay. While I do this, well, in the Old Testament, there is a number of prophecies that talk about things that the Messiah had to do, but things that were slightly out of control. Um, there are a lot of commentators talk about how many prophecies there were, there were. How many do you think there were in the Old Testament? Rough guess. How many? Three. That's a, I don't know. I've got someone else. That, that's not Adam. It's more than 20? It's less than 400. It's about 350. Yeah, about 350. Do you know how many that looks like on the bench? Do you know how it looks like? They don't have that many. 350, there's a round. Some commentators say some, some more, some commentators say a bit less. 350 prophecies about this one Messiah that had to be fulfilled. 300. Let's dive into just a handful of them that talk about Christmas, that talk about his birth. Okay, a handful say Messiah will be a son born of a woman. Messiah will be born in Bethlehem. By the way, that's a little bit difficult where you are choosing to be born. You can't, you can't strategize like you know, like the game that we had with the candy canes. Do you remember that game where you can strategize and kind of think which can, how many do I take? You can't really do that with where you're going to be born. When when JJ was born, he didn't tell Catherine. By the way, I would like to be born in Africa. Like he 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 had no choice in the matter. He was born in Pembury. Full stop. Like that's that's what was happening. Born of a virgin, that makes it quite difficult. <laughs> really, doesn't it? Just a little bit. Be called Emmanuel. Spent a season in Egypt. So after that, he had to spend a season in Egypt. A massacre of children were happening in Messiah's birthplace. The Bible says that. The, the Bible says, as a prophetic word of the Messiah to come, that a horrible act like that would have to happen. Be called a Nazarene. We read that. Um, we, we read that in Isaiah. In Isaiah, what Elijah read said had to be brought up in um, a bring a light to Galilee. The passage that Elijah read says that a prophetic word that has to bring a light to Galilee has to be an heir to King David. Again, something that um, Elijah read. So if I if I was just to say, if I was just to say, forget the three hundred and fifty, let's just shorten that down to this small list here. Even this list, to try and complete where a lot of these things are out of your control, I think we can all agree is a little bit difficult. In fact, um, smarter people than I did a mathematical calculation on eight prophetic words about Jesus, and they believed it was 10 to the power of 17. One to 10 to the power of 17. It's similar to saying, if I took a coin and I marked it blue, and I was to place it in a pile of coins that were two stories up across Texas, and I was to say, JC, come here, I'm going to blindfold you, and I'm going to push you to pick a coin. You need to pick one coin, take it out, and it needs to be the marked one. It's the same probability of that happening. About that. And that's just eight. And this is just 12. Out of 350 prophecies about this Messiah. There's a reason why when we talk about the Christmas story, we're not just kind of celebrating just the event itself, but we're celebrating the answer to 350 promises. The answer to something that is talking about the essential Messiah coming to be delivered. Now you're asking me, I get it. You're asking me, James, even for these ones, are you sure they've been fulfilled? Yes. Let me give you proof. What we've got against all of these are New Testament fulfillment of the prophecy happening. Let's take a few. Born in Bethlehem. That's what happened in Matthew and Luke. A census was made and they were sent to Bethlehem. Born a virgin. Virgin Mary. 
Born before, lineage of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Judah. That is a specific lineage to be able to follow. But if you read at the beginning of Luke, um, you see the fact that you've got this lineage um, of Jesus, 40 generations to Babylon, 40 generations to David, and then go to Abraham. You see the lineage of Jesus that can be tracked back. Spend a time in Egypt. We read that. We see that as part of the census that occurred. An heir to King David. We see that as well. The fact that he was in that family line. Believe me, when we're coming together to celebrate Christmas, we're not just celebrating the fact that a little baby was born in a little manger and this kind of thing. We're celebrating the fact that we have the Messiah come. That the Saviour of the world come to free us. The Christmas story is not a story just about a baby. The Christmas story is all about the beginning of our freedom. The answer to our freedom, the answer to these many, many 350 prophetic words with a 400 year gap to then have Jesus, the Son of God, born, raised, and therefore, in alignment to the prophetic words, died for our salvation. The Christmas story is not just about a baby born in a manger, it's about a saviour who has been raised up to die on a cross so that we could be saved. The Christmas story is not about a baby born in the bed, a baby being born in the manger. It's about our lives being born again in Him. Let me give you some of the words. This is the point. If if the words about the birth are correct, then the words about His death are correct. If Jesus was was born in um, in Bethlehem, Jesus had to be betrayed as well. Do you see what I'm saying? If Jesus was in the lineage of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Judah, then Jesus had to be mocked and ridiculed. The Messiah is not, the Christmas story about the Messiah is not just about a high, kind of nice, happy, happy time. It's also about a time where this Jesus will be crucified on the cross for our salvation. These 350 prophetic words are not just kind of nice sentiments. They're talking about a Messiah that is going to be born in a unique way put to death in a unique way. I celebrate Christmas not just because of the family times or all those kind of things, or even I don't celebrate Christmas just because of the Christmas story of Jesus being born. I celebrate Christmas because it is a mark of the Son of God being born for my salvation, for my freedom. That is an amen. That is a joyful, joyful thing. It's why we can sing joy to the world. It's why we can sing these things. We join in with the angels singing, heart the held angels sing, because I am singing about my salvation. Let's go one extra. Let's go, let's go deeper with this. If the promises about Jesus, the prophetic words about Jesus is correct, it means the promises about his character and about God's character is correct, which means God loves me. It's a fact. It's a fact, it's certain. Because all the 350 prophetic words have been answered, it means that God loves me. It means that God gives me great joy. It means that God gives me his son. So as I receive gifts at Christmas, the biggest gift I can receive is salvation in the king. It means that the things that are promised about Jesus is not just what he does, but it's who he is. And because it's who he is, it's what he's made me. It's what Ephesians 1 says, that I'm a child of God, that I'm bought with a Christ. I am chosen. I'm forgiven. I am seated with God. These are promises that are true. Now, now you might be sitting there, you might be kind of going, Jesus, that's all well and good, but what does that mean to me? Now is a moment where I don't know, is he all right? I'm just going to invite um, Kevin, my little baby boy, up to the front if that's all right. Bring little, bring little Jude ahead. This is mainly to make sure that people can actually see the boy and, and listen. But, um, oh, you are adorable. I didn't know you were wearing this outfit. Come on. Okay. And my boy. Yeah. Okay. November the 9th, 2021. I got to hold my boy for the first time. 
And the first time I looked at him, um, which is a shock, obviously, not being a parent before, the first time I looked at him, not only did I just kind of go, I don't know how I can love you more than I can anyone else apart from Catherine. But I looked at him and didn't just see him as a baby, but I saw what I want God to do in him. I saw the potential for his future. I saw the potential for what he's going to grow into. I see this boy and I don't just kind of go, aren't you little cute? I look at him and I, I proclaim his name, Judah Jai, Shabbat Malik Bala, and I say, I want you to grow to become a warrior of God. Your, your birth means more than just kind of you being born and being a family member. Your birth means that I get the privilege of raising you as a child of God. Here's my point. What's the Christmas story mean to you? Well, when you look at Jesus as the baby in the manger, it's easy just to look at him as the baby in the manger. But actually, when we talk about the Christmas story, we don't look at Jesus just as the baby in the manger, but we look at Jesus in the manger and say, this boy, this child, is going to grow up to be a man that is going to save the world from his sin, from his shame. This significant sign of a baby, the potential of what the Messiah is, what he's growing into and what is to come, is for us to celebrate in the fact that this baby is going to save us for all humanity, for all the world. It's not exclusive just to those who are Christian that can recognise the baby. It's that anyone, anyone who lays their eye on baby Jesus at Christmas, the promise is true. The significance is real. And it's a chance for us to join in and to say, you know what, that potential that I see at that baby at that time, I want that for my life. I want the promises that it says to be real for me. And there's a very easy step. Alpha, which is a fantastic course that was starting up in January, is a great way to learn a bit more about the Christian story, to learn more about how Jesus answered these promises and to dive deeper into Christianity. And Alpha helps us with a very simple way of talking about giving our lives to Christ, the choice of making to say, that baby is going to grow up to save the world and I'm going to choose that in three simple steps. Sorry, thank you, please. Sorry for what I've done. Thank you, Jesus, that you died for me, that you grew and you answered all the prophecies and you died for me. And please help me to live my life for you. It's very simple. And if you would like to do that, Ian and I would love to at the end to come and chat with you about it. Or even if you're interested about Christianity, we would love to talk to you about Alpha. Just exploring a little bit more. But in that way, we're gonna, um, I'm going to pray and we're going to sing the last carol. So if band, do you want to just join me at the front? Kids, do you want to stay here for the last carol? And then we'll give you some chocolate? Good, okay. <laughs> the promise of chocolate, I've done it. Okay. I'm just going to, I'm going to pray. Do you want to, if you would like to, I'd just invite you to stand with me before we sing the last carol. He's cute, really. Okay. I'm going to pray over us, but I'm also just going to briefly pray about what I've shared about the promise. Um, I do ask, if you, are, if you are considering it, thinking about it, or anything like that, please do not leave today without having a chat with, with us. We would love to talk to you about our Saviour, the promised King, who carried out the perfect plan. So we'll be standing around outside and that. Please come talk to us about it. But let me pray, and then we're going to sing our last carol, joining with the angels, half the heavenly, half the heavenly angels sing. Let me pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you, God, that you played the perfect games. You planned the, you planned the perfect plan. And Jesus being born is not something on Christmas that we celebrate just about the baby in the manger. But we celebrate the perfect plan of your kingdom of our salvation. We look at the baby Jesus and we just say, praise you God for what you've done to save us and make us free. But I pray today, if there's anyone who's just thinking about that, talking about that, I pray that you would be real to them today. As we join in joyful celebration about you, my Saviour. 
in your holy name. Amen. Amen. Amen.